All right, welcome on back to Skippers today. I'm going to go through some of the most disappointing picks that you could have possibly made for your fantasy baseball teams right now. It's not always your fault that these players are bad. You made good picks. They just stink right now. Thank you to Sober MLB for sponsoring the video. Join the Discord, subscribe, and let's get into some of the worst picks so far. At the starting pitching position, this is the easiest one you could have ever made. He was going at a Yahoo ADP of 59. That is Alec Manoa of the Blue Jays. So far this season, 1-7, a 6-3-6 ERA, 58 innings pitch, 48 strikeouts, and a 1-9 whip. I hate to say it, the pitch clock seems to have absolutely kicked Alec Manoa's ass. There's way less movement on his slider. The velocity is down. He can't even get out of the first inning anymore. For a guy that was getting Cy Young votes, this is a crazy, crazy downfall and something that kind of happened to another Blue Jay back in the day, Ricky Romero, someone who never pitched in the big leagues again after that, but that was due to injury. Alec Manoa, um, quite the fall from grace. Uh, I think I said it before, I loved Kevin Gosman instead of Alec Manoa. I didn't tell you to not draft Alec Manoa at any point, but it was Kevin Gosman is the better pitcher on this team. The uh, expected stats said that. And then Alec Manoa has regressed well past um, the fact that he had outperformed his expected stats. But Alec Manoa, I don't know if there's many others like this. And if he gets call sent down to AAA, maybe one of the worst uh, picks you could have ever possibly made. So Alec Manoa, disappointing at uh, – the pitcher position. At catcher, we go to Tyler Stevenson of the Reds. He was going as the 11th catcher, so not crazy, crazy good, but his counting stats so far this season, 238 average, three home runs, 22 runs batted in, and a 671 OPS. What they said about Tyler Stevenson at the start of the year, which is why I was in on drafting him, why he's my catcher, and why I've struggled uh, in one of my leagues, is that he was going to play absolutely every day. And that was awesome. It's like, hey, you're going to hit a great American ballpark. The power had never showed at the minor league level, or sorry, at the major league level. It's like, yeah, you can figure it out if you're going to hit every single day. And then he just comes out here, a guy who is a really good average hitter and has hit to a 238 average and a weighted runs created plus of only 81. I don't know what happened with Tyler Stevens in this red lineup. It's kind of potent. It's pretty good at this point. And then Ellie just got called up today as well. So personally, I think JT Real Muto could be on this list as well. But for me, it's Tyler Stevenson. Super big disappointment. Um, not someone that you spent a huge capital on, so you're kind of okay in your leagues if you had him. But uh, Tyler Stevenson, big disappointment to me. At first base, another easy layup. Jose Abreu of the Astros. He was going as the sixth first baseman off the board, um, ADP-wise. Look at his counting stats. 214 average, one home run, 23 runs batted in, and a 540 OPS. Last season, his way to runs created plus was 130, 140, I believe, and he seemed to be one of the unluckiest hitters in all of baseball. So you see that, Jose Abreu, going from White Sox team to the Astros, and it's okay. You should be back in on Jose Abreu. He was very unlucky last year. Again, he is old, so maybe bat speed was going away a little bit, but he was hitting the ball hard enough where the expected stats were really good. And you put him in an Astros lineup where he should have been close to the middle to get a lot of uh, runs batted in as well. And Jose Abreu has done none of that. His way to runs created plus so far this season, a abysmal 51 for Jose Abreu. Um, maybe age and bat speed really caught up with him. And the fact that he did the slide after his home run in Oakland was crazy. I can't, I can't believe this is how it's happened for Jose Abreu and this is how he's going to go out. But yeah, really, really disappointing season so far from Jose Abreu. At second base, not too, too bad, but Andres Jimenez of the Guardians is going to be my pick. He's hitting 249, not horrible. Three home runs, 14 runs batted in, seven stolen bases, and an OPS of 674. He was going as the seventh second baseman off the board um, by Yahoo, but Again, I didn't have super high expectations for Jimenez. I don't think he's an outstanding, outstanding hitter. I thought he was just going to be able to get you kind of counting stats all over the board, um, not just super great in one category. Weighted runs created a plus of 88. Not horrible for Jimenez again. Um, some of that contract doesn't look awesome for him if he's not going to be able to play um, league average with the bat, but again, plus plus defender. So Andres Jimenez, um, I don't think this is the worst one. Rankings-wise, you're not too, too disappointed at the second base position, I don't think. Uh, so Andres Jimenez is my pick. Don't think it's that bad. You go to another one that is bad, and that is the third base position, where I have Manny Machado of the Padres. Was hurt a little bit, but a 234 average, five home runs, 19 runs batted in, two stolen bases, and a 653 OPS. Um, it, you don't really love to do baseball savant side-by-side -side pages, but if you look at Manny Machado's 
rolling numbers from the past three years. It's gone from bright red, red again, and then this season just not very good. He's lost in. I was kind of surprised. Is one of the more uh, complete hitters in all of baseball, one of the more consistent hitters in all of baseball. I was at the point where I was thinking there's no way I'd be off Manny Machado. He's just that good, that consistent. It feels like as he would age, um, the way he plays still um, translate well to his later years because he's just a bat first guy, um, speedier before when he thought he could still play some shortstop. But I thought Manny Machado would just be bat first forever and we'd be okay with that. But this season's been pretty concerning. He was the second third baseman off the board, an ADP of 13, and he is running a way to runs creative plus um, – 19 percentage points below league average at 81. So Manny Machado, pretty disappointing at third base. We are back on So Rare MLB, the best way to play a nice little alternative with fantasy baseball for free. Now we are going to go into the private contest. We have created one. I'll have the link in the bio. I'll have the link in the comments as well. You're going to get to play against me for a game week. It's going to run from the Mondays to the Thursdays. The link will be there ready for you guys to enter into the contest. And the winner of this contest will get a free subscription for the rest of the year for MLB TV. Who doesn't like MLB TV being able to watch all of the games? You take your cards, you'll play for a single game week and whoever wins a free subscription to MLB TV. Don't think there's a better way to play for free. Take your players, put them up against me. You'll see how I do my private contest play against me on so rare mlb and we'll see how you guys stack up we go to shortstop and this one might be killing your teams if you drafted him first overall like i thought he should have been drafted that is trey turner of the philadelphia phillies he hits 243 seven home runs 19 runs about an eight stolen bases and a 684 ops pretty sure two of the home runs came last night right his adp was first off the board trey turner is a five tool player if you have ever seen it you go to a great phillies lineup as well that he was going to hit at the top at and you thought people would just drive him in the whole time he would steal bases and just be one of the best players in all of baseball again he is one running a weighted runs created plus of 82 this season trey turner um, you got to be kicking yourself. I know Judge pre-injury would have been up there, and Raul Acuna definitely up there for guys who should have gone 1-1. So, yeah, if you were the one who selected Trey Turner, like I thought you should have done, it was, a, it was a good pick at that time. Hasn't really worked out for you. Trey Turner, disappointment at shortstop. And then we go to the three outfield positions. I just combine them all because usually you don't play left, center, or right fielders. First, Michael Harris of the Braves, 168 average, two home runs, eight runs batted in, five stolen bases, and a 506 OPS. Injured three separate times, an ADP of 31, and a weighted runs created plus of 40. What made him the NL Rookie of the Year last year has not translated into his sophomore season, although I think there are brighter times ahead. I mentioned it, I believe, in a video last week or two weeks ago where I thought, if he's on your wire, you might as well be taking a shot at him. Uh, but Michael Harris hitting in the nine hole for the Braves was kind of where I started to um, be worried about. I guess he would have hit seven or eight, probably moved up a little bit more. But where I was worried about production just nothing with swing, nothing with anything like that. Just where he was going to hit in the lineup, just at the bottom. It's like, I don't know. Michael Harris is worth that draft capital, and he's turned out to not be worth anywhere close to that draft capital. We go to another outfielder that I loved, and I think is starting to turn it around a little bit, but I've personally been pretty disappointed. Taylor Ward of the Angels, ADP of 117. Not horrible, um, but he's hitting 241. Okay. But six home runs, 22 RBIs isn't what we saw from him last year, able to put the ball out of the yard at a consistent basis. He lost his job and left, I believe, to Mickey Moniak for a little bit. Um, seems to be figuring it out right now. 662 OPS and weighted runs created plus of 84. That might be the best on this list as well. But uh, Taylor Ward has personally disappointed me, so I felt like he had to be on this list. And then we go to a guy that I wanted you to buy low on. He might lead the whole world in strikeouts. He might set a league record in strikeouts, it seems like. Teoscar Hernandez of the Mariners. He's hitting 241, nine home runs, 30 runs batted in, three bags, and an OPS of 688. He's going 55th off the board. So, I mean, fifth round type of pick. And he has a weighted runs created plus 92. Okay, Taylor Ward wasn't the highest. It was Teoscar Hernandez here. Um, he's found a different way to create value, not just hitting home runs like he has um, in other years. Teoscar has, but I think it's pretty disappointing as a guy who is silver slugger candidate multiple years in a row, 
has hit big home runs, and then he moves over uh, to the AL West with the Mariners and just hasn't been that good. Kind of disappointing. Uh, there are definitely some other people that can make this list. But to me, these are three of the more disappointing uh, players. Thank you again for watching the video. Let me know who else has disappointed you. I'm sure there is a lot of them, and I'm sure they're bringing down your fantasy teams. Thank you to So Rare MLB. Subscribe, join the Discord, and I will see you guys later this week.